am a huge single malt whiskey fan. I love single malt whiskey. I love buying it. I love collecting it. I love tasting it. I love sharing it. I try to collect them, but honestly, as soon as I've bought a new whiskey, it's opened and poured and, and explored and shared. And I think it's just a fantastic thing. It's a fantastic thing to share. The reason I set up Hagwaviti.com was to evangelize about whiskey and specifically, I guess, single malts. But recently, in November or December last year, I went to quite a few tasting events and something strange happened where there were grain whiskies presented that ended up being up there with the best whiskies that we tried at the events that they were presented. And that made me stop and think, I haven't spent a lot of time or effort looking at single grain whiskies. And on paper, they look like really good value. They look like, given their age, if you compare them to the single malt equivalents, they look like they could be that hidden gem in the Scotch whisky landscape. So what I wanted to do was do a blog post for aquavite.com to talk about uh, grain whiskies, single grain, blended grain, explore things a little bit and see if there was anything in it. Now, will this translate into a flavour experience? Will this be something you can enjoy? Will they compete with single malts? Well, that's what I wanted to do. For aquavite.com, I wanted to put together a blog post where I explored this and I spent a bit of money on some grain whiskey drams, shared them with a friend, a couple of friends, um, and just tried to work out if they were worth looking at. But I decided it might be a good idea on this occasion <laughs> to do this on video. I don't know why, but we'll go with it anyway. And put together this, film it, and give you the feedback and work out if single grain, blended grain whiskies is something that we would recommend. Might end up being quite a long video. Just, just quickly, another thing that's probably worthwhile mentioning as well is that you know, aquavita.com is kind of set up as a, as a kind of whiskey evangelism thing. It's not necessarily set up for whiskey experts to come in and read. It's, it's kind of more angled towards people that are kind of whisky curious <laughs> and I find that a lot of people even people that are enjoying whisky don't always necessarily understand what a grain whisky is and how it differs from a malt so it's worth spending a second just to talk about that there are only two types of whisky made in Scotland we only make two kinds of whisky single malt and single grain and single malt the single refers to it being a product of a single distillery. This is a geographical term, a geographical location that it refers to. And malt is simply the fact that it's made from, from malt, 100% malted barley, that's single malt. It's a batch produced product. It's made at 100 plus distilleries across Scotland. And it tends to be a little bit more expensive because of the batch style production. Single grain whiskey, on the other hand, the single is the same, it refers to a single distillery. But grain, just is, that's just a word to say, look, this is Scotch whiskey that's made from other grains other than malted barley. Now those can include, actually they have to include some malted barley, but they, it can also include green unmalted barley, it can include corn and wheat. And in fact, nowadays, because of the availability and the price of wheat, it's mostly, I believe, produced from wheat. So that's single grain whiskey. Um, it's made in, in, in an industrial process. There's only seven or eight distilleries, I think, making grain whiskey in Scotland. And these, these things are running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, using column stills, paint stills, continuous stills. These are industrial pieces of kit that just churn out whiskey very cheaply at a higher alcoholic strength. And the product that they produce is grain whiskey and that grain whiskey finds its way into blends mixed with malts and the two of them mixed together makes a blended whiskey. The other two categories of scotch are simply made up by single malt and single grain. If you take two or more single malt and blend them together you've got a blended malt and if you take two or more grain whiskies, single grains, and blend them together you've got a single grain. And that's our five whiskies. That's the five categories of whiskies in Scotland. Single malt, single grain, blended malt, blended grain, and blended scotch. You probably, you probably knew that already, right? I've maybe just wasted your time. Sorry. Oh.
Okay, so just to give you an overview of the green whiskies I've selected in order to do this comparison, this little exploration experiment, um, I went on to Drinks by the Dram through Master of Malt and I bought five samples. Now there's, I spent about £40 or so on these samples, so not cheap, but given the ages of the whiskies that are involved here, certainly not expensive. And I felt that that was better than me just going out and spending 40, 50 more pounds on a single bottle and just kind of comparing uh, the green whisky landscape to single malt based on the experience of one bottle. So I went for quite a range here. Started off with a single, sorry, a blended grain, um, three single cask, single grains from independent bottlings and also an official bottling of a single cask, single grain as well. So let's have a wee look at these. First up is Compass Box Hedonism. Now, this is the blended grain whiskey that started it all. Um, I'd never even heard of blended grain whiskies when this came out. Um, I think it might have been the first blended grain to be commercially widely available in the market. And um, I remember trying this for the first time um, from the perspective of somebody who didn't think that they liked green whiskey, that it was just cheap, nasty, rough filler. And obviously this um, completely changed my opinion because it's a fantastic whiskey, it's delicious, it's nice to sip, it's sweet, it's engaging, there are layers of complexity in there. Maybe it's not a session um, whiskey because it, it is a bit sweet for my palate, but the quality is fantastic. Then we move into three single cask, single grains from independent bottlers. The first one is, is from a Highland grain distillery called Invergordon. Now this Invergordon is a 21 year old, um, bottled at cask strength, um, being a single cask, uh, single grain whiskey. It's a 21 year old from Hunter Lang's The Sovereign series. So distilled in 1992 and bottled at 60.4%. Um, this was recommended to me. It wasn't very expensive. I think this dram was about £7 and I think a bottle, going from memory, is about £80 or thereabouts. Um, as you can see, the colour of these whiskies, they're actually quite pale. And the reason for that is that grain whisky tends to be aged in refill ex-bourbon casks. And uh, you, we don't really know how many times these have been filled with whiskey before the grain whiskey goes in, maybe two, three more times. Um, but you can see that there's not much wood colour influence in the spirit itself. They're all quite pale. Next up, we have two independent bottlings from Master of Malt. Now, Master of Malt are obviously an online retailer, but they are a, an independent bottler in their own right as well. And the first of these two we have is a Cambus 24 year old. Now Cambus interestingly closed down in 1993. So what we have here is a silent distillery. If this was a silent closed single malt distillery, a 24 year old um, example of that from 19, a closed distillery in 1993 would probably set you back several hundred pounds or more depending on the kudos surrounding that, that distillery and depending on the demand for it. This 24 year old canvas is 95 pounds. And on paper for a closed distillery, that represents fantastic value for money, I think. Let's see how it actually tastes when we try it, of course. And then another one, another single cast single grain, again from Master of Malt, this time, um, a North British, we have a 27 year old North British. Now that's, again, if look at this on paper in terms of a value prospect, 27 years old, um, single cask, single grain whiskey, bottled at cask strength of 57.3% and this is costing 74 pounds. This dram cost me five pounds and some change for a 27 year old. I challenge you to find anything in the single malt landscape that can even come close to that based on a value prospect. Um, I just hope that this is as delicious as it, as it seems it could possibly be on paper. And finally we have an official bottling from Diageo. This is one of the Diageo special releases. Every year Diageo release a range of limited edition special release bottlings 
And in 2011, they released this, which was their first single grain um, special release bottling. And this is a Port Dundas, which curiously is also a closed distillery and closed in 2011, which is the year that this was bottled. Um, it's bottled at cast strength. Again, it's 57.4%. Uh, uh, this is a 20 year old. Um, and if you look at the color of it, you can see compared to the other grain whiskies we've looked at, it's, it's considerably darker. And there's a reason for that, that after only three years in refill bourbon, this was divided up and split amongst uh, freshly charred European oak, some American oak bodega casks and first fill American bourbon casks. And that concludes our um, grain whiskey lineup. But as I mentioned earlier, what I thought I'd like to do just to kind of try and keep this objective and have a kind of bit of control in there is add in one or two booby traps as well. Certainly a couple of single malts at least just to see how the grain whiskies stack up against the single malts to see if we can actually pick out from the lineup what, which are the single malts and see how it is in terms of flavour profile. And the two single malts I chose for that is um, first up a Little Mill, a 1991 um, Gordon and McPhail Connoisseur's Choice Little Mill bottled in 2010. So this is a little under uh, 20 years old, this bottling. Um, unfortunately, it's bottled at 43%, so it's a little light on ABV to be in this lineup, I would say. Um, that might make it easy to pick out. But the reason I chose this Little Mill is because um, although I haven't tasted it in a while, I do remember the flavour being quite grainy, quite light, quite citrusy. Some flavours in there, I would imagine, would be reasonably consistent with what you either expect to find in some grain whiskies. So I thought that would be a, a good one to pop in the lineup for fun. And then I've also popped in a, a cask strength um, signatory vintage. This is a Longmorn from Signatory Vintage and um, 25 years old uh, cask strength bottling. And the reason that I've put this in here is that when I went downstairs to the cabinets and looked to see you know, what kind of cask strength single malt I could find to put in this, everything was a no because most of the single cask stuff I have, most of the cask strength stuff I have are, are big, bold, um, meaty whiskies that you would just pick out straight away. They would stand out like a naked man with his hair on fire in this lineup. So I went with the Longmorn based on the distillery's profile of being light, tropical, white fruit, heavy, pineapple, these kind of flavours. And also I seem to remember from this a, a, a nice grainy maltiness about it as well. So that's our two single malt booby traps. Just remember that these are in here um, for no other reason than just good fun. So, and just to see if we can pick them out. I'm also going to pour one other booby trap that I won't mention now that I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell you about after we've done the tasting. Um, I'm typically very bad at this. I am pretty rubbish at picking out. Um, even when I've selected the whiskies, I tend to be quite rubbish at, um, at picking out um, the right ones. I, I tend to confuse myself and taste things that don't exist and things like that. But I'm up for a bit of fun. I really want to work out if grain whiskies are the value that they'd seem like they may be on paper. Um, I've certainly had a lot of feedback to suggest that they are worth exploring. So we're going to take care of this um, hopefully tonight, tomorrow night, and uh, feedback to you. Here we get one. So we completed the tasting. Um, it was a disaster. We, I got none of it, nothing right. I didn't pick out the two malts. I didn't pick a single grain whiskey. I, I failed miserably. 
The only thing, the only thing that's good about this is that the other guys failed in the exact same way, which just goes to show the only real way to do this is to do it blind. Because I'm sure if we knew what whiskies we were tasting first, we would have been preconditioned and had expectations and followed those expectations through to the taste. The only real way to do this is blind, I'm sure. And um, to be honest, I'm amazed, a bit embarrassed and a bit gutted about some of these results that we discovered, but they are what they are. This is what happened. Our last whiskey of last night, the least enjoyed whiskey was this. This. Now, I have to say that the reason for that is not the whiskey. It's not the whiskey's fault, it's my fault. This is my bad. This is not the right whiskey to have put in that lineup. It's far too powerful. There's far too much going on. There's far too many flavors. It's far too bold. It was a mistake. And I think in any other lineup on any other night and under different circumstances or even taken in isolation, this whiskey would perform much better. The problem with last night is that we, the, the flavours, and especially on the finish, it was so medicinal with eucalyptus and aniseed and, you know, those fisherman friend sweets. I mean, the, it was so strong that we were reaching for water and oatcakes and dark chocolate to try and clear our palate so that we could taste other things after it. So it was just the wrong whiskey to choose. My fault. My bad. And in second last place last night was the booby trap whiskey that I put in at the last minute and I didn't tell anyone about it. I didn't even mention it on camera before, but this was second last place. Obviously this is a single grain whiskey, so it fits in the lineup, but this is only 40% proof. And this is young whiskey. Um, it, it tasted young. It, on the finish, it was light. There was some bitterness there. Um, that, came, that came across, but this was not a bad experience. It was not horrible to drink. There are a lot of people hating on this just now. And this is not designed to go in the lineup that we drank it last night. It's, it's out of place. This is meant for a mixologist. This is meant to be put in a tall glass with a mixer like ginger ale or coke or something else. If you're drinking this as a sipping whiskey, you're doing it wrong. Stop hating on it. It's 18 pounds. It's This is meant to go up against vodka. And it does that fantastically well. Okay, hog in the middle ground of our lineup were all the single cask, single grain whiskies. All of them were kind of, you know, decent enough. Um, the Cambus and the Invergordon were both kind of 50-50. We felt, well, oh, they weren't really doing anything for us. The North British, the 27-year-old, that deserves special mention because that 27 years old, perhaps a few extra years in the cask, did add a bit of engagement there and we, we all decided that we really quite liked that particular one. But the Port Dundas, despite a fantastic nose, a fantastic arrival, it kind of drifted away on the finish. The finish became quite bitter and herbal and slightly medicinal. There was less to hold you in there and I think for the money that that's getting now, that Port Dundas, for the money it would cost you even £10 or so for a dram, I think it's just a little bit expensive. But I think what comes across, with the exception of the Port Dundas, is the cask issue here. All these grain whiskies are aged and refill bourbon casks, and we don't know how many times they've been refilled in the past, and I think that comes across that these casks are probably not very active, maybe a bit tired and past their best, and even after 20 plus years, these whiskies just didn't have enough wood going on. There wasn't enough influence from the cask and there wasn't enough to engage us beyond agreeing that there were, there were decent enough whiskies. I think with the exception of North British, which again, just those few extra years, made that difference and made it quite a decent dram. And at £74 a bottle, that remains something that we would probably recommend because if you want to go out and spend your money on a single grain, single cask whisky, that would probably be the area to look at. That was a decent, a decent whisky. Now, winning the lineup last night, perhaps by the power of, of deduction you've worked it out, but was the Little Mill and Compass Box Hedonism. Listen, it's a surprise for us as well, but I think what I take from this is these are both 43% whiskies. So perhaps with us not adding water to these cast strength whiskies, 
simply because we were pouring such small measures of them, um, it maybe didn't release everything that they had to offer. I'm not sure though. I, did, I just feel that that none of us were put off by the alcohol there. There wasn't much of alcohol burn going on. It, they were fairly easy to take neat. Um, I suppose with it being cast strength, we maybe should have put a couple of drops in there. Because down at 43%, these m might be the reason that we just engaged with these um, and, and made them unanimously. These were the favourites for all of us. I actually believe that they were these were just the, the better whiskies on the night, if I'm absolutely honest. Um, this is a kind of good whisky anyway. I don't think it's worth the money you'd have to pay to get this now. But this, on the other hand, is definitely worth the money. Okay, this is a blended grain and at sixty pounds, so that's might be hard for me to justify. But let me try. At the risk of sounding like a compass box fanboy, you know I like what they do. I've already mentioned that. If you go on the compass box website, which is a fantastic website, you can download this for any of the whiskies that they do. But this is the fact sheet for hedonism. And in this fact sheet, you can go and look at the batch of hed hedonism that you're drinking, and they will tell you the makeup of that blend. They will tell you exactly the proportions of the components inside that whisky. Fantastic. But it gets better. If you drop them a message, they will respond quickly. I did this. And they will tell you the ages of what's inside your compass box hedonism. And I can tell you that the ages of what's in that blend is a lot older than you imagine. And at 60 pounds a bottle, it represents fantastic value. And I have to say on balance, even up against that little mill on balance, the winner of the night was, it's, an, it's a shock to me, was a blended grain whiskey. And I think the whiskey rev probably summed it up best and he commented on just the art of blending. And he said that what Compass Box have been able to do there is to take three grain whiskies and blend them together to make a product that's greater than the sum of its three parts. And that sums up our feeling about that dram last night. And it makes me feel that out of the whiskies that we tried, the one, the only one I could really recommend for anybody to go out and spend money on would be that hedonism. It's just, it's just a great whiskey. Anyway, remember guys that we made some mistakes, we're kind of amateurish at this, we're doing the best we can. It's all about fun and it's all about exploring whiskies and trying different things. That's why we went along the route of drams on this occasion rather than buying bottles and it's been great fun recording this on video. We don't usually do this kind of thing. If you've had any fun, if it's been if it's been interesting for you at all, please feed back to us at aquavitae.com. If you're picking this up on YouTube, leave a comment, hit the like button, subscribe to us, and you'll encourage us to do more things. Thank you for taking the time to watch this pretty long video, and slanchin', enjoy your drafts.